Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the gradient in curvilinear coordinates. Let's be given x is f of u, v, and w, y is g of u, v, and w, and z is h of u, v, and w, a coordinate transformation. And we're going to assume this coordinate transformation it gives rise to orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. So we'll explain what that means when we talk about the gradient of these functions. Okay? So then define our setup is to look at r of x, y, z, the vector field of position, which is x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat. And I can fill in these expressions over here. This is going to be f of u, v, w, i hat plus g of u, v, w, j hat plus h of u, v, w, k hats, right? And then we get these three vectors over here. We're going to get partial r, partial u, partial r, partial u. And partial r, partial u is going to be some number h1, some normalizing factor, times a unit vector. Partial r, partial v is going to be h2 times some new unit vector, j hat. And partial r, partial w is going to be h3 times some vector k hat, okay? And so now we call this system orthogonal curvilinear. This is orthogonal curvilinear coordinates, orthogonal curvilinear. If i dot j equals zero, if i dot k equals zero, and if j dot k equals zero. And you might think that, oh, well, if these are constant, that's no problem. The key thing to remember here is that every expression over here, h1, i1, h2, j, and then h3, k, all depend on u, v, and w. So h1, h2, h3, i, j, and k depend on u, v, and w. So they're actually functions of u, v, and w, okay? All right, and so these h1, h2, h3 are called the Lamé coefficients of the transformation. So h1, h2, h3, h1, h2, h3 are called Lamé coefficients. And these Lamé coefficients come up all the time when computing gradients, Laplacians, and other, co other things in these orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Okay, great. And so now, what I'm going to do, and of course, what are these things? So now what we can say is this. So let's do this. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at dr, right? So what is dr going to be? So dr, this de vector differential, is going to be dr du, partial r, partial u, in the direction of i hat, du, plus partial r, partial v, dv, plus partial r, partial w, just the first order differential, right, dw. Now we can fill in what these things are, right? This is going to be h1 i hat du plus h2 j hat dv plus h3 j k hat dw. So that's the differential of these orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. And so now the arc length element is just going to be dr is ds squared, right? So the arc length element, arc length element, is ds squared, which is dr dot dr, by definition. And so what we're going to get over here, so we're going to get an h1, h1 i hat du, plus h2 j hat dv, plus h3 k hat dw, dot the same thing, right? Dot h1 i hat du, plus h2 j hat dv, plus h3 k hat dw. And by the orthogonality condition over here, this turns into what? This just turns into h1 squared du squared plus h2 squared dv squared plus h3 squared dw squared, okay? For a general metric, you also get the cross terms over here with symmetric conditions, but for orthogonal curvilinear coordinates, it's perfectly diagonalizable. Okay, excellent. So now, this gives me a great relationship, because if I look at, now, if I want to look at the directional derivative, now I know these vectors i, j, and k are all mutually orthogonal to each other, right? Which means that we can consider, let s1, let df, ds1, be the directional derivative 
in direction i hat. Same thing with this other one. The F2 is going to be the derivative in direction j hat. And partial f partial s3 is the direction is the derivative in direction k hat. Okay. Okay. Then what can I say about ds1? Well, ds1, in the direction of i hat, these components don't contribute, right? So in other words, what I can say is I can say that the change in s1, the change in s1, is really what? The change in s1 is really going to be h1, the change in u. And then the change in s2 is going to be h2, the change in v. And the change in s3 is going to be what? The change in s3 is going to be h3, the change in w, right? So now, in particular, what I have is now I can say what? From previous videos, we know that if we have an orthogonal frame, we know that for an orthogonal frame, the gradient of f in an orthogonal frame is df ds1 i hat, what i hat is, plus df ds2 j hat, plus df ds3 k hat, right? But now, of course, what are these things over here? So I can replace, if I put a delta f on top of all these things, what can I get? Now, differentially, if we put a delta f on top of any of these things over here, delta f, delta f, delta f, delta f, and delta f, and pass to the limit, what do I see? When we pass to the limit, we get the following relationship. We get the relationship that the gradient in these curvilinear coordinates, so that grad f, is going to be what? It's going to be 1 over h1, 1 over h1, partial f, partial u, i hat, plus 1 over h2, partial f, partial v, j hat, plus 1 over h3, partial f, partial w, k hat. So this is the formula for the gradient in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. So in further videos, what we're going to do is we're going to examine these Lemay coefficients over here in different coordinate frames and see how we can use this formulation over here of the gradient in addition with like vector operations like divergence and curl to find vector identities and curvilinear coordinates which appear oftentimes in electromagnetism and quantum mechanics in all sorts of different frames where we need to use spherical symmetry or cylindrical symmetry or some sort of symmetry in a problem. We often want to pass to an orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system and be able to write down the different operators in those coordinate systems to make our calculus and our differential equations and our partial differential equations a lot easier to manage. Thank you very much.